Okay, in this video I want to focus on creating web forms for a web page. And web forms are really going to be one of our first tools for true interaction on a website. And that means that not only will you be able to give information to your web visitors, but you're going to be able to get information from them. And if you've spent any time on the web, certainly you've come across web forms before. Here's a couple of them. Um, here on the ABC News website, of course you've seen this on many, many websites, right up here in the top right corner, uh, they've got a search box. And of course this search box allows me to type some text, topics I want to find, and then I can hit this button called Go. Now for forms, what you just need to remember is that this little button here is a submit button. All forms need that submit button. And there's different kinds of form elements. This one that I just typed in is probably one of the most common. It's an input type text. And they've just got the little label there, search. So on the source code of the ABC News website, there's a section of HTML called form, and there's an input type text, and then there's a submit button that makes this little go box. Let's check that out. So I'm going to view their source code, and I'd like to find their form. So I'm just going to do a search for it here. And here we go. Here's their form. A form is created by using the HTML form tags. Opening form tag, closing form tag. I'll be using those in just a second. Their form has been given a unique ID. We are now familiar with this. Whenever we see that unique ID, it's because they are doing something with it with cascading style sheets. Also note that uh, their form is encased within a div. Uh, the ABC News website, by the way, is a fantastic example of well-formed markup language and a good use of CSS. ABC News was one of the first of the big news sites a few years back to switch over to CSS as their primary design tool, uh, as opposed to tables. Okay, now uh, they have an action. The action is where the data that people type into the form is going to go when they submit. We won't be really covering this in this video series. Um, it's something I cover much more detail in the advanced web authoring class because it requires some script on the server to receive the data and process it in some way. So right now we're going to focus on creating the forms to collect the data. In another video I'll look at what we can do with that data once we get it. This on submit is a JavaScript event handler. Basically, uh, JavaScript is going to look at this data and probably do something. It could you know, TD search. It's probably going to take it and uh, maybe clean it up a little bit before it goes on to the script. They're using a label tag here for the word search. And here we go. Input type text creates the text box. It's uniquely identified. It also has a name and a value. Notice the value is empty not really necessary but that's what they've got and they've also set a max length so no one can type in more than 200 characters into this text box. Now I mentioned there would be a submit button. They're using a slight alternative to that. You can have input type submit to create a traditional submit button. They're using input type image. Whenever you use an input type image it's the same thing as an input type submit and that's the little image that shows up. There's the source of it and there's their little go button. When they click on it it will send the data to their script. All right, so there's a basic form, and that's the one on ABC News. And I'm going to look at my current page. Here's what I have. I've got a blank uh, HTML file, uh, well, kind of blank. I do have a headline one in there, and I want to start by creating a form. Just so we can keep track, here's what my page currently looks like. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and create a form. Now, to create my form, I'm going to put my form inside a set of form tags, opening and closing and I will go ahead and put in some basic attributes inside of my form tag. I'm going to give it a unique ID. I'm going to call it form1. Method equals post. Action equals the URL to my form script. I'll just put that in for there for now. Now within my form I'm going to have a series of requests, things that I want to get from my users, and I'm going to use another common form element called field set. The field set is going to be a, is a block element that contains form fields that are related in some way, a set. 
Uh, a good example of this uh, might be if you've got a large form and part of it is going to be for shipping information, part of it's for payment information, part of it's for personal, you know, stuff like that, address area and things like that. I'm going to use the title attribute. So the title of this particular field set I will put in um, I'll put in the address information, mailing information. Okay, now within my field set, I'm going to request a couple of things from my users. I want to get their first name and last name, their uh, and their mailing address. All the stuff I would need to be able to send them a store catalog or something like that. The uh, the field I'll be using most mostly in this particular area are going to be text boxes. And I'll give you a quick example. I'm going to go ahead and create a label for their first name. And that will be first name. Okay. So the label tag is the text that people see which identifies the purpose of the particular input item. We saw this on ABC News's website. Now I don't believe on ABC News they were using the for attribute, but I'm a big fan of the for attribute. And I'll show you why in just a second. After the label, I want to have a text box. Input type equals text. ID equals first name. Notice that the ID attribute in my text box matches up with the for attribute in my label. Name equals first name. I'll go into a little bit more detail on this name attribute in just a second, but practically all input elements are going to have a name attribute, and this is going to be the data that's sent along with your t typed in data to your script. So it's more critical once we get into some server side scripting, things like that. And actually, this is pretty good for now, so I'm going to close this. Notice the input tag is a self closing tag, just like the input tag, um, just like the meta tag. It's self closing, so there's a space in the slash at the end. I'm going to go ahead and save what I have here, jump over to browser, and see what this looks like. Here we go. Now, here's my form, here's my field. My field set is creating that thin border around everything and here's my label for first name and here's my text box where I can start typing in some information. So far so good. By the way, using that for attribute in my label tag and my ID attribute in my input tag allows me to activate this text box by clicking on the label. Watch, when I click on the label first name, my text box goes right in there. It goes right into my I'm sorry, my insertion point goes right into the text box. If I wasn't using the for attribute matched up with my ID attribute, then I wouldn't get that great little effect. Okay? It'll come in. It's even more useful later on when we do things like radio buttons and text boxes. Okay, so there's my request for the first name. Well, I'm also going to request some other things. I would like to get their last name, their uh, city and their state and their zip code, all the things I need to do for addressing. So I'm going to go ahead and create some more fields really quickly, very similar to this one. Okay, so I've created a bunch, uh, some more labels and text boxes. I've got one for first name, one for last name, one for the street address, one for the city, and one for the zip code. I've skipped over state temporarily here. So otherwise they're all structured pretty much the same. They are all type equals text. They all have a label using the for attribute. The for attribute. They all, all the input tags have unique IDs which match up with the for attributes, and they also all have names. All of my inputs have names, and for now, my names match up with my IDs, even though they technically don't need to. Um, so everything's okay there, and they're all self-closing. This is how my form is currently looking: first name, last name, address, city, zip, and there it is over here. Now it's already looking a little bit sloppy. Um, everything's going in a row, so I would like to break this up and start to make it look a little bit neater. And for that, I'm going to use some style sheets. So really can't go far without wanting to use some CSS pretty soon. Now on ABC News website, we just looked at a very simple form, and I'm sure they were using some CSS on there, but we didn't check it out. Over on the IKEA website, they were using tables to manage their forms. I'm not going to use tables. Instead, I'm going to use some style sheets.